this could be the perfect weekend for Manchester City with our chance to go top of the Premier League facing Southampton this Saturday, 3 o'clock kickoff here in the UK at the Etihad Stadium. And I will be doing a watch along, of course, so come and join me for that one. What a game this promises to be and what a weekend this promises to be. And if City do their job, we are piling on the pressure. Pile on the pressure to Liverpool and Arsenal who face each other on Sunday. And what a game that promises to be. But get in the comments below and let me know who you would rather win out of Liverpool and Arsenal. Because I know a lot of people will say oh, you'd prefer a draw. But you could be looking at a situation here where, especially Arsenal, I personally would rather Liverpool beat Arsenal. Because I see Liverpool, they're a, they're a new, fresh side. I still see Arnie Slot has got a, a lot to prove. I feel like they've got off to a fantastic start. They're top of the Premier League, of course. They deserve to be there. They've been playing good football. But who have they faced? They're about to enter a run of fixtures that could prove to be very, very difficult for Liverpool. As are Arsenal. Equal fixtures of difficulty. It's going to be really tough for both those sides. But you could be looking at a situation where if Liverpool beat Arsenal... And the fact that they've got Chelsea coming up, Arsenal have, and Newcastle away. If they drop points and we collect maximum points in the next three or four games, Manchester City could be looking at seven or eight points ahead of Arsenal. You know, which at this stage, even this early, you could be saying it almost writes them off. You know, that early into a season. I wouldn't go that far in saying writing them off completely, but it depends on the circumstances. But they drop three points against Liverpool and we pick up all three points against Southampton, you know, they're in big trouble. They can't be affording to lose to Newcastle with plenty of suspensions and injuries to worry about as well and, and Chelsea coming up as well for Arsenal. So I would, I would like City to be in a two-horse race where we can just zone in on our main title challenges. Who are we going to lock horns with for the rest of the season? Because we've not faced Liverpool home or away yet. So if we can... Rule out Arsenal at this point. I mean, it's it's a big bold statement to be ruling anyone out of the uh, of the three at this stage of the season. But you start making point gaps of seven or eight points. It's it's serious trouble for Arsenal. But like I said, though, this is a it's a tough fixture for for City, regardless because it's Southampton. It just doesn't make it easy because I, if you asked me last week, who would you most want to play out of Wolves, uh, Southampton, Palace, Ipswich, all those teams down there? I would have said Wolves because they're bottom of the league. They've conceded the most goals, but look how that game turned out. It took a 96th minute John Stone's last minute winner for us to get over the line. We fully deserved to win that game, mind you. We were, we were bossing the game for the majority of it. Um, and and they, it was backs to the walls for, for Wolves during that game. Southampton, though, at home, you think this should be a little bit more comfortable. We've got to score first, though. We can't keep going 1-0 down, and we did just that in terms of scoring first against Sparta Prague. And the game just settled. It took us till the second half to get our second goal, but then bang, 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 made it 5-0. And I think we could do the same to Southampton. But if you give them something to hang on to with a goal to, to start the game going, then you just don't want to give them that hope, you know. But they were 2-0 up against Leicester most recently, and they lost 3-2, being 2-0 up at half-time. And it was, I think it was like a 96th minute winner, 98th, if memory serves me. Uh, winner for Leicester. It was brutal, brutal for Southampton, who are still without a win this season. They haven't won a single game this season, but they aren't the only ones. Ipswich, Palace and Wolves, all those three sides, as well as Southampton being the fourth side, have not won a Premier League game this season, which is an English top flight record. No one. And we've never seen a season like this where we're eight games into a season and four of the sides in the top division haven't won a single game. So, again, question for the comments section. Get in the comments and let me know. Have you ever seen a season where a gap is, a gulf in quality is starting to appear on the table? Because I would argue points-wise, yes, there's a, there's a big gap between the, the, the top half of the league and the bottom half of the league is starting to, there's the, eight games in as well, there's this level of gap that we're starting to see. But I would argue on match day itself, I mean, City versus Wolves finished 2-1. No one's really wiping the floor with anybody. For the first time this season, we scored five against Sparta Prague, a team we should be comfortably beating in truth. But we're not wiping the floor with anybody this season. So is it a bit more of a... Is it smoke screens the, the, the points? Because I still think we, we found out against Wolves. It can be tough, you know. But without a win this season, at home, at the Etihad, surely, surely Manchester City get the job done. Surely. You know, but you look at Southampton's record, it actually stretches back over two seasons. You know, because they've actually gone 21 Premier League games without a win. Which is unbelievable. 
unbelievable. Whereas Manchester City are 31 games unbeaten, breaking our own record in the Premier League. We are seven games away. Seven games away from 38 games unbeaten. Do we call that Invincibles? Invincibles are getting... Well, that's going to trigger some Arsenal fans, I'll tell you what that will, because that will be a debate that will rage on. I mean, they did it in one season, from the start of the season to the end of the season. Ours is the same amount of games, just spanning over two seasons, you know? So, which is harder? I would argue that stopping a season and going away on your holidays and then playing international football and then coming back and hitting the ground running to the same standards as what you did the previous season is arguably harder. When the, when you've got the wind in your sails and you've got momentum with you, you can go undefeated. I would also like to introduce a debate to that as to how many points were accumulated in those 38 games between Arsenal and Manchester City. Having said that, we're only at game 31, so we've got seven games to go before we can say we went 38 games in the Premier League without losing a single game as well. But I would love to do it over the course of the actual season because that would just absolutely destroy the Arsenal fan base, who would just crumble and capitulate into non-existence. I think they would just cower and just disappear under all their rocks that they like to crawl out from since they've been managing to mount a title challenge in the last couple of seasons. But, I mean, Southampton, you know, they haven't won a game at the Etihad since 2004. So, you think Manchester City should be winning this game reasonably comfortably. Um, team news, Jack Grealish, who Pep reported to be out for 7-10 to 10 days, that was a couple of days ago, so hopefully he's uh, close to return uh, for future games, but probably ruled out for this one. Doku, Pep said as well, longer than Jack Grealish, which is a concern. De Bruyne, is he still out? Walker, Oscar Bob and Rodri, of course, are the long-term absentees, and this preview is done before Pep Guardiola's pre-match press conference, so that he may provide some information that is uh, makes this video outdated in terms of team news but from the news I've been given these are the players that are out for Southampton Ryan Frazier is suspended uh, Gavin Bazuna who's been out for the majority of the season is out the goalkeeper and uh, William Smallbone uh, Willie Smallbone is what I would call him it's unfortunate and Ross Stewart are out as well. Jack Stevens is back from suspension as well, which is a massive boost for the defence of Southampton. Right, so let's have a look at the predicted starting eleven. I'm going to go with Southampton first, putting Aaron Ramsdale at the back. And I think we can expect to see something similar to what we saw against Wolves, um, where we saw a, a pretty flat back five. Uh, Sugawara is a doubt for this game, by the way, but... I mean, he went off early in the in the Leicester game where they were 2-0 up and lost 3-2. Um, but Sugawara would probably play as a... I'd put him as a right wing back. With the fact that Jack Stevens is back, I think he's going to find himself in as one of the three centre-backs uh, with Bednarek uh, in the middle in between them. Uh, Harwood Bellis and Jack Stevens, And... Walker Peters, who could play right wing back as well. He could he's been playing left wing back as well. He's a versatile, can play on both sides for Southampton as a full back. You could see Charlie Taylor as left back as well, uh, as a possibility. You could see uh, Manning playing there as well, who's dropped deeper to, to play in those positions. Uh, but I still think it's gonna be Walker Peters for the back five. In front of that back five, I think we'll see uh, a fairly rigid midfield four. Uh, where Joe Aribo will be in there with Downs, in the midfield with uh, Aribo. I think we'd see Fernandez, which we saw against Southampton. Mateus Fernandez, who is predominantly a central midfielder, but he played a little bit on the left against Arsenal, which is where my thinking's coming from, because Arsenal and City, you think about the, the style of the two sides, I think that's going to be a similar option. I'm not sure if they've got a better option, really, to play on the left. Certainly not to the standard of uh, Mateus Fernandez, at least. Uh, and on the right, uh, Dibbling, with the very quick, very worrying Cameron Archer, who will be lethal on the counter-attack using his speed. Manchester City, Edison, coming back in between the sticks after Ortega got a run out in the Champions League. Uh, I think we're going to see Ruben Diaz, who came on as a substitute. I think John Stones is going to get a rest, considering he played the full game against Wolves. And he also got some serious minutes against... Um, Sparta Prague I think we'll see Gvardiol coming back in and Manuel Akanji uh, going as a right centre back in front of them I think we'll see Rico and Kovacic in front of them uh, Phil Foden I want to see him in the middle and I want to see Bernardo Silva in the middle as well uh, which I think worked 
And the fact that we have now got no um, Jack Grealish, no Jeremy Doku, no Oscar Bob, we are three wingers short, which was made sense as to why we saw Mateus Nunes playing on the left wing. He's got two assists, uh, a self-made penalty, which he tucked away, and, and I mean, put it away, banged it in the top corner. I want to see it again. I want to see it again, and I hope we do, because I feel like he, he offered a, a power and pace that we want from our wingers, but also a little bit of that central midfield, astute, clever, little trickery with in terms of passing ability and vision. Is, is there for, for Mateus Nunes. And I think that's it's a good option for City to now have as a winger. Uh, and Savinho on the right with the big man up top, Erling Haaland. My prediction is I'm going to go for the age-old, boring old 3-1. Everyone goes 3-1, but I feel like this has got a 3-1 game written all over it, to be honest. I feel like this could be a 3-1 type of game. Hopefully, we score first, ultimately. Clean sheet would be lovely, because we need to take the clean sheet we took from Sparta Prague into this game. That would be a perfect situation, but the ultimate aim is getting three points on the Premier League board and piling the pressure on to Liverpool and Arsenal to make this potentially a perfect weekend for Manchester City fans. Get in the comments below, let us know your thoughts, like and subscribe to Typical City and I'll see you in the next one. This is Typical City now, holding up silver.